Well, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Uh, by way of introduction, I'm Bill Ragsdale, the founding president of the Fourth Interest Group. And today we're going to discuss uh, program development, supporting a simple game, and then a strategy development. And of course, it's the familiar Rochambeau or rock, paper, scissors. So let's see an introduction from a popular television show. I'll tell you what, how about we go rock, paper, scissors? Ooh, I don't think so. No. Anecdotal evidence suggests that in a game of rock, paper, scissors, players familiar with each other will tie 75 to 80 percent of the time due to the limited number of outcomes. <laughs> I suggest rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock. <laughs> what? Oh, it's very simple. Look, scissors cuts paper, paper covers rock. Rock crushes lizard, lizard poisons Spock. Spock smashes scissors, scissors decapitates lizard, lizard eats paper, paper disproves Spock, Spock vaporizes rock, and as it always has, rock crushes scissors. Well, the game we're going to program is a good bit simpler than that. Today, first section will be how to program the game, then some techniques and tools that will be used for testing, the development strategy and how to develop a winning strategy for the game. So to summarize, there are two players who alternate uh, taking turns. The first player uh, picks either a rock, paper, or scissors, and the other player then matches with their guess. Uh, each object can either win, lose, or tie, so there are a total of seven possible outcomes. The rules are that rock breaks scissors for a win, scissors cut paper for a win, and paper wraps rock for a win. We'll set up a matrix of the game outcomes. Well, we have two players, Alan and Betsy. And so uh, Alan is represented by entries by column, and Betsy's response is, is uh, indicated by the row. And then we'll place an integer in the intersection based on the two plays. So here we see what the matrix looks like. In the top left corner, we see if, if you play rock against rock, it will be a tie. The entry is zero. If Alan plays paper and Betsy plays rock, he will get a win with a, with a, a symbol or code of one. And if he plays scissors against rock, he will lose. And the play result is two. So you notice on the major diagonal, there are ties and three positions between uh, rock, rock, paper, paper, and scissors, scissors. So our code for this is first we go into the logic for the win-loss tie, and that's, of course, based on that decision matrix that we uh, just saw. We then will create some very simple uh, report elements, uh, who won a given competition and why, and then create an automated playing process, a report process for showing the results for one match, then a, a repetitive sequence of matches, uh, to, uh, this will result in automated play. And then finally, a statistical choice of the plays to make, attempting to develop a strategy to win against a biased player. And the key here is a biased player. If both players are strictly at random, then all uh, the win-loss records will be random. But the goal is to find a biased uh, a player and then play against them. This is the fourth development of the code. We, uh, uh, in the middle of the screen, we see we create an outcome. This is a, a, a simple uh, byte array. The entry values are uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 4, 5, 6, and 0. They're all commented in as a byte. And this is just as we expect in uh, a very simple uh, memory allocation. The symbols entered by the players are simply rock, paper, and scissors. So they are declared as constants. Rock will produce a one, paper produces, uh, pardon me, rock produces a zero, paper produces a one, and scissors produces a two. So you just type the word at the uh, console entry and its value will go on the stack. The sequence for playing a game is quite straightforward. Uh, under a game, we see that First, a selection is made. We then show the result, and we show the reason for the result. 
and the result selection is the indexing into that array we just saw. So the uh, array, the result selection does the uh, row column analysis and either acts, uh, gives us the address for the uh, entry. The well, bottom two lines show us a simple gameplay where the paper will enter a, a stack value, rock will enter a stack value, a game plays. And then the result would be to say, in that particular case, uh, Alan does a win of paper wrapping rock. We'll see this expanded in just a moment. We'll make extensive use of case statements here because there are, as we said, seven different outcomes and we want uh, different actions for each outcome. To log the game result, the uh, case is done uh, the case uh, statement then examines to see the result of the play. If it was a zero, then we see that, of course, is a tie. If it's a one, a four, or a five, the uh, win goes to uh, Alan. And if it's a uh, two, three, or six, the win goes to Betty. Our uh, reporting uh, routines, the first one is to show the result. And again, it will look at those six different cases of zero through six. And if it's a zero, the, the report, of course, is Allen and Betty tie. And for the other values, we can see the cases for which Allen wins and Betty wins. To expand on that message, we show the reason of, for the particular win. Again, in the cases of zero through seven, the uh, case zero is silent because it was a tie. Uh, for a uh, result of one, it will be saying uh, the win was because paper wraps rock and so on. So in in two or three words, we now have a, a, re a diagnostic system for testing and a report system for playing the game. This is a sample play. The red is what would be typed at the console. Uh, Alan types in paper, Betty types in rock. We execute a game. And that generates the uh, the re game result in the matrix that we saw. We'll execute show result from the console, and we'll get a report that said Alan wins. And then we show the reason, and it will say paper wraps rock. And that's uh, one example of play. So how to develop a strategy for this game? Um, it's pretty boring if it's just uh, play, 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 and you uh, you uh, you only win uh, half the time. So to uh, develop the strategy, you must determine that either one player has a bias or another player has an edge. Uh, the bias is, uh, uh, in this case, is, is done against uh, Alan. So Alan will be shown to have a bias in play. And that means that Betty has an edge or she has knowledge that uh, will help her in strategy development. The, uh, Rule is very simple. If you win, you do more of whatever you did. And if you lose, you do less of it. And then, of course, you want to vary your play to avoid alerting your opponent. And I would off offer this as exactly as card counting in a casino. If you're playing 21 in a casino and you find that if the dealer has uh, more 10 count cards, you can vary your strategy in one direction. If the dealer has a fewer 10 count cards, you can vary it in another direction. And that is the basis of uh, card counting at casinos. The code that will uh, that is underlying all of this is first we set up the probability of the choices. And in this case, we're going to have a bias for Alan and uh, and uh, Betty will be responding to Alan's choices. Your opponent will pick the choice at random, but with the bias for, for Alan. Uh, Betty will then make a choice according to her table of probabilities. On a win, Betty will, will alter her table of probabilities slightly. On a loss, again, she'll decrease uh, the future probability of an outcome. And notice we say slightly because you want to make the choices over a long period of time rather than abruptly. If the choices are abrupt, uh, too abrupt, you'll end up having an oscillation switching between strategies. So the uh, we will see that the changes are done slowly over a large number of gains. This is the probability setup for Betty. 
Uh, the B rock is the probability of Betty playing a rock. The B paper is the probability of Betty playing paper. And B scissors is her probability of playing scissors. And in this case, uh, everything is done over 1,000, uh, uh, a, uh, a base value of 1,000, which represents unity. So we will put in uh, 333 for each of Betty's probabilities. So she will play uh, equal strategy to begin with. For Alan, it's a little more complicated here. We won't get into deeply in it. But what we've done is, uh, Alan, at the bottom row, we see Alan, Alan has a, a probability of greater than of, um, of 20, 250 for paper. Now, if it was random, that should be 333. But we biased it down from 333 down to 250. The... Uh, Values, the, prob the probabilities are normalized to uh, 1, which is equal to 1,000. Uh, this avoids having to use floating point. And so uh, Betty's choice is uh, that um, the she'll be looking at the probability of a paper plus scissors in which to play rock. If it's greater than, if that probability is greater than the probability of scissors alone, she'll play paper, else play scissors. Uh, don't worry about that. The uh, math takes care of those choices. And here is Betty's strategy of play. Uh, first, we uh, we generate a random number of uh, from zero to to uh, nine nine nine. That is the one thousand random. It's applied through a little logic series, and it picks out based on her current probability uh, uh, what Alan played, what she will play. The Betty's update will do a uh, the Betty's play, and then it will look at the um, where the cases output cases of zero one two three. That uh, result will then applied and uh, and care compared to the result. The second half of this then is for the resulting uh, situation. If uh, the case is zero. Uh, the Betty's will be adjusted by the value of 1,000, which represents 1, and so this is no change to Betty's probability. If, on the other hand, she lost, uh, in the case 1, Allen would win, Betty will adjust that, that play downward by uh, one half of 1%, which is uh, a decimal point 995. If, on the other hand, she won, then case number 2 takes uh, effect, and its value is 1005, which represents a, uh, an adjustment of 1.005, or an increase of half a percent. So in, re in response to all those uh, seven situations, Betty adjusts her probabilities. At the bottom, we see a scaled multiply. The 1,000 uh, times divide uh, does the adjustment uh, to uh, unity of all of these probabilities, or all these adjustments. This is a history now of uh, gameplay. In the uh, match number one, we see that uh, Alan uh, won that with a probability of 100%. Uh, and at that point, Betty's strategies are the last three columns. So in the rock, paper, scissors, last three columns, Betty's strategy. And currently, it's 33% uh, it's, uh, for each of the choices. At match number 500, this time they have played a number of games, and there have been 34 ties. Uh, Alan has won 29 times, and Betty has won 35 times, uh, or these are percentages. So uh, Alan has won 29% of the time, Betty has won 35% of the time. And we see that under the scissors column now, uh, Betty has reduced her probability of playing scissors. It's only 19% of the time, and she has increased her paper play from 33% to 45%. So we strategy being developed for her play scissors less and play paper more. We play up to the number of 1,500 uh, matches, and we see what the uh, B level, the uh, the, the Betty is now decreasing the number of plays on rock. 
Rock started out at 33% of the time and now it's down to 28% of the time. In the paper column, we see that she's increased her probability of using paper to 71% of the time. And she has set the value of scissors zero, so she no longer plays scissors. Running this out to 1,700 games, we see that 30% of the time there are ties, 28% of the time Allen wins, and 41% of the time uh, Betty wins. So she's increased her uh, win from 33% uh, of the time to 41% of the time. And during this development now on the last column at the bottom right, she no longer plays rock at all. She plays paper 100% of the time and scissors uh, never. And this is taking, of course, of of uh, Alan's uh, bias uh, toward uh, always playing rock. So we see how the strategy development takes a long time to play and it still is not win. There still is a fair amount of randomness in the game. And so there's still a lot of ties. So the conclusions that we can infer from all of this, uh, Programming the gameplay was pretty simple. We had a simple uh, win-loss tie uh, matrix table. Entries were uh, updated from that table after each game. And we developed a reporting system. The scoring and reporting was quite straightforward. And uh, we see that even against a very gross player, that is a player who had a bias that was continuing through the game, it still took a fair number of uh, plays to develop a, a winning strategy. The fact that these values do trend uh, over a, a long time, a fair degree of variation along the way, but over a large number of events, the uh, probabilities will take effect. And this small edge is why casinos stay in business. They may only have a 1% or 2% uh, uh, probability on winning a game, but it's inexorable. If you play long enough games, uh, the house will win. So I thank you very much for your rapt attention today. And now we'll turn things back to our fearless leader, Kevin, and have a great day with Forth. Thank you.